now I'd like to talk about the things that are most recent advances in the um, uh, in the world of pain management uh, for the NUS procedure. And this is in that special group or, uh, of, of techniques called intercostal nerve blocks. So remember, the intercostal nerves are the nerves that are under each of the ribs of the chest wall. Those nerves are both motor nerves and sensory nerves, but their most important role um, in the, in the post-operative NUS setting is that they are the main sensory nerves for the chest wall. So all the pain um, signals that are going back to the brain of a patient with a nest bar in their chest is coming from, the vast majority is coming through the intercostal nerves. So if you can block the intercostal nerves without actually having to put medicine in and around the spinal cord, then all the better, all the more safe and equally effective. So that's how this whole world of intercostal nerve block has evolved. The first technique I'd like to uh, talk to you about is a technique that I have changed, that I have used in my practice. And it's the use of a local anesthetic called bupivacaine that has been re-engineered and and, uh, and in so doing, it has uh, allowed this local anesthetic to have its effect prolong significantly. So bupivacaine will last when used in its standard configuration, about two to four hours. But in the form that it is when it is expirel, it has been mated or attached to this liposome, this thing called the liposome. Think of it almost like a little water balloon of pain medicine that has a very slow leaking. And slowly over time, the liposome releases the local pain medication and works to turn off the signal of the intercostal nerve back to the brain. So it essentially, pharmacologically, through the action of the medicine, disconnects the nerve from the brain and causes numbness of the chest wall in so doing. Next slide. So the pros, so the reason why this is such an effective technique of pain management is that it prolongs the effect of local anesthesia up to three to four days. And the technique is very straight and, and, and uh, very uh, safe and straightforward. It is, it, it is a technique that um, is facilitated by having a telescope, a lithoricoscope in the chest, which is part of the equipment that we use to do the NUS procedure safely. And using that telescope and the skill of the surgeon, a small needle can be directed right to where the intercostal nerve lives under the rib. And a portion of this medication can, under direct vision, be injected around the nerve very precisely that then short circuits that nerve for up to three to four days. I, I do this over about eight levels over in each chest cap. So it's, it's eight injections on one side, eight injections on another. And once you get good at this, it takes you about 10 minutes to do. It, it reduces the need for post-operative opioids, 
narcotics, not to zero, but it definitely reduces the amount of narcotic necessary. It, 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 it eliminates injuring the nerve. You're not injuring the nerve in any way, okay? You're just pharmacologically turning the nerve off. And it accomplishes exactly what we would hope it would do. It reduces the hospital stay up to one to two days of what it would have been if you would have just used the old technique of thoracic epidural. Next slide. The cons are simply that the effect lasts only as long as you're in the hospital, about three to four days. So in most cases, it's necessary to continue the multimodal therapy beyond the hospital stay, which is pretty much what almost all techniques require. And in my practice and in my experience, the use of narcotics, once one goes home and once this nerve block has diminished, is accomplished with all the medicines we talked about, plus a narcotic, a simple narcotic like Percocet, which is oxycodone and Tylenol, taken a few times a day for no longer than a week. And then the patient is able to be managed on just Tylenol, NSAIDs, which is Motrin or, or Advil, and some Valium. And that usually is necessary for about two weeks post-op. There are some technical errors that can occur that would lead to an inadequate pain relief, meaning if you don't put the medicine where the nerve lives, then the effectiveness of the injection will be diminished. Also, if you put the needle um, not next to the nerve, but into one of the blood vessels around the nerve, and don't, and don't recognize that, then that could be a problem. But again, very unlikely that intravascular injection would occur in the hands of someone who is skilled and knowledgeable in doing this technique.